Okay, guys, we are going to react to the new Jubilee video. Uh, this one is is being fat a choice. So it's fat versus skinny middle ground. Um, why is there a fat versus skinny middle ground? Um, I don't know. I'm sorry, oh, man. there's a very a there's a big difference between the people who are telling people go out and get fat versus a Lizzo who's so saying accept me yeah. the way I am. She's not just saying accept me the way I am. She's dressing extremely scantily clad and then saying if you don't think that it's normal for a morbidly obese person to be wearing a G-string in the middle of public, then you're the problem. Why do skinny people hate fat people so much, dude? Why, I don't understand. Why do they actively hate fat people? Like, it's not affecting you. Whatever. Being fat or skinny is a choice. Agree or? I think it depends. I, 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 that's not a yes or no question. It's an it depends question. If, Here, here's what I'll say. It depends. For someone like me, yeah, being fat is a cho is a choice. I don't want to work out. I like to eat food. There are people with serious health issues where there there is no choice for them. They don't have the ability to to either uh, exercise or or eat uh, healthier foods. So I think it's a. I don't think it's a fair question. Of course, not every factor is purely choice. Um, I don't think that every factor is, but I do think a majority of it is. In most cases, for most people, being skinny or being fat um, is about willpower. It's about um, the environment you grow up in, sure, but who you choose to associate <coughs> with, what sort of things you choose to listen to, who you choose to kind of have as your friends around you and support you, all of those things are choices that you can make that will lead you closer towards being one or the other. Did he mention music? Am I high? When you grow up in shore, but who you choose to associate with, what sort of things you choose to listen to, who okay. you choose to kind of have. When he said what sort of things you choose to listen to, I'm like, do you mean music? Music makes you fat? Your friends around you and support you. All of those things are choices that you can make that will lead you closer towards being one or the other. I know what I do with my body. I know what I put into it day in and day out. I choose not to eat some days. Um, I choose, you know, how I want to look and that's not healthy. That's not healthy. This is okay. Wow. All out the gate. Listen, I'm not a nutrition expert. Um, that's not healthy. That's, I mean, I guess if you're doing intermittent fasting, that's slightly different, but I don't think there's been any conclusive evidence that intermittent fasting is like actually beneficial to your uh, metabolism. One of the things I want to say, uh, before this even gets started, it is so much more important. Listen, if you have kids, okay, it is so much more important that your child has a healthy relationship with food than it is that your child has, an, has a, a drive to exercise and work out every day. I would rather a child have a, a, a healthy relationship with their body, a healthy relationship with food, a healthy relationship with their, their mental health, and the other stuff will come later, okay? There are parents who their kids will be like, mom, can I have seconds? Like, no, you don't wanna get fat. Not the conversation you should have with your kid when they're young and impressionable. Instead, find out if they're hungry, right? If they are hungry, give them a little bit more food. Give them that healthy relationship with food. Say, yeah, you can have seconds, but let's only have seconds of like the vegetables. Maybe we only have seconds of, of, of the fruit on the plate. Maybe we don't have seconds of all the starches. Maybe we don't have seconds of all the, the, the fats and the sugars. Those are healthy ways you can have this relationship with food and with, with nutrition intake, as opposed to what a lot of, in my opinion, skinny health concern freaks want you to do, which is don't eat some days, but that's just me. I don't fault anyone for how they want to look or how they want to be, but I think it's a choice at the end of the day. I'm very you know, always wish-washy on how I want to be presented and if I want to gain weight or not. But the only person that's going to gain the weight at the end of the day is me and me myself. 
for me it's calories in, calories out, go to the gym, you'll get buff, don't go to the gym, you won't get buff. <laughs> I understand that there's genetics that could cause you to want to eat more, but even with the genetics that cause you to want to eat more, the same solution is calories in, calories out. I think yeah. the, the whole choice is, you know, always determined on who they are and it's not gonna just be a thing done overnight. Yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of, I think it's like breaking the barrier and breaking a lot of things, not only your body, but also breaking your mental state. Sure. And again, that depends on who you are and what you wanna go through. Disagreeers? I feel like... Can I say something without everyone getting mad at me? She bad as fuck. <laughs> Sorry. As a toddler, I always viewed myself as big. I grew up in a very like poor home, so where my mom couldn't provide the meals that she could healthily. So when we would get like free meals, even then it would be like canned food, and it would be like very much food that's not as edible. It was food for us, yes, but then I felt like once it reached a point where I was old enough to try to make my own choices, I made all of the wrong choices. I wasn't eating, and I was only eating like grapes and lettuce, and that was mainly because I was in a sport and that sport just worked me out so hard. And it was to the point where I just was scared to eat. I, I didn't like it. I would only drink water. When that you were was, eating grapes and lettuce, were you thin? I was the thinnest I could be. Were you still big I though? Not, I was still big, but that was the skinniest I've ever been. And that's coming from somebody who was only eating somewhat salads that are just fruit and lettuce and water and maybe ice right before a practice. Do you think one of the things I want to point out, and she she touched on this, and, I, and I'm hoping somebody else touches on this, but they might not, is we have to remember that a good portion of Americans live in a food desert. Now, for those of you that don't know what a food desert is, um, hey, thank you for following over on TikTok. For those of you that don't know what a food desert is, think that oh, right. Let me let me minimize this real quick so we can we can educate. So, a food desert is an area that has limited access to affordable and nutritious food. Um, so there are food deserts all over America. Um, uh, I think the stat, let me see if I can find it on here. So nearly 39.5 million people, um, that's 12.8% of the population, were living in low income and low access areas, according to the USDA's most recent food access research report, which was published in 2017. Within this group, researchers estimated that 19 million people or 6.2% of the nation's total population had limited access to a supermarket or grocery store. Now, why is this important in a conversation about body image and about weight and about all of these things? Well, typically what can happen is when you live in a food desert, the only food you have access to is, is unhealthy food. So you don't have access to fresh fruit and vegetables. You don't have access to more lean meats and things like that. You wouldn't have access to more like fish as opposed to, ch to chicken and to beef and to things like this. And what's really important is a lot of the times the, the places that, that match up to these food deserts are going to be fast food restaurants. So you may, you may have better access to a McDonald's than you do to a fresh grocery store. Or you may have better access to Burger King than you do say a Trader Joe's or a Whole Foods or something of that, um, of that like. So we really need to look at the way we've set this up when we talk about weight and we talk about building unhealthy relationships with food and how food deserts are really impactful to these things for millions of Americans it means you're just not eating healthy stuff. And even the the food that you can buy at the, at the store is gonna be more, it's not gonna be the organic stuff. It's gonna be loaded with like preservatives and loaded with, with, with things to keep it on the shelf for longer because it's harder to get to you. So I hope someone touches on that in this video. We'll see if they do. Now you would not be capable of becoming a thin woman. If I you to. possibly would be capable of becoming a thin woman, but since I was young, I was supposed to get blood tested probably when I was very, very young, and I never did. And they had mentioned that it could have been because of my weight and how that connects with my thyroid. I never made the connection, and I never had like that, like leaning parent to be like, go and get checked out, go and do this, like. Your weight is probably not your fault. It was always like, your weight is your fault, so that's your issue. I mean, I also struggle with 
you know, thyroid and my own mm -hmm. blood issues, I'm not quite sure, but I do see an endocrinologist and I go see a doctor. It's a choice mm -hmm. to do the requisite steps. It's a choice to go grocery shopping instead of going to fast food when it's easy. It's a choice. I wish I was here. I wish I was on this. I wish I was on this episode. And like not Jubilee, put me on. <laughs> I would literally just respond to her with these stats. Ugh. Go in we already brought up the, the food deserts. And not go into the junk food section. These are all choices. As a disabled <laughs> woman, I can't do a lot of the things that people say, calories in, calories out, oh, you gotta go work out and exert it. A lot of the things that are typical, oh, this is how you lose weight, put me in the hospital. I have to navigate weight mm -hmm. differently. I have to look at it differently. My weight is the way it is because of medication, because doctors put me in this position. And I had to learn, okay, am I going to be so hateful of my own body that I am going to backlash and put myself through extreme gym nights, through keeping myself from eating things that I should be able to eat. You should be able to have a balance. You should be able to go into the junk food aisle like other skinny people do yeah. and still not have to worry about gaining 20 pounds. But I don't think skinny people not go people. into this junk food aisle. They I think certainly yes, do. They do. They eat a lot of junk food. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of junk yeah. I mean, my. Yeah, I. <laughs> the, the girl in the red shirt is so out of touch with reality. I, what's always so interesting about the skinny fat to me, now, now again, I'm biased. I'm a big boy, okay? I don't mind being a big boy, okay? I like food. I like sitting down. I don't like working out. Now, I've gotten more exercise since moving to Florida because I go to Disney very often, and that is a lot of walking. So honestly, moving to Florida is the best thing I could do for, for exercise and stuff. But one of the things that is constantly talked about here, okay, is being unhealthy. So there's always this connection made with being big and being unhealthy. It's kind of like um, uh, Zem, if you know um, uh, Zem on, on TikTok, Invader Zem, uh, they often talk about how the, it's a systemic issue. Um, um, fat phobia is this systemic thing, okay? And how, you know, we just view big bodies as unhealthy. But one of the things that they, that is net, well, it is talked about from, from bigger people. But one of the things that I never hear the skinny side of people talking about is the fact that when we look at skinny or skinnier Americans, there can often be wildly more unhealthy habits that they're engaging in, right? I've seen people who are stick thin, who are chain smokers. I've seen people who are stick thin, who are alcoholic, right? It, but because their body doesn't metabolize food the same and they're able to say, for instance, take me and my brother, okay? My brother growing up, half my size. We ate all the same things, okay? Me and my brother ate essentially the same foods. He just, his metabolism zoomed where mine didn't. Um, Cause in high school, I wasn't sedent I wasn't as sedentary as I am now. I was out, I played basketball like every week with friends, but I was still fat. Right? I definitely wasn't as fat as I am now, 30 years old, backed on a bounce. But I think it's just interesting, this, this association that's made between um, specifically fat bodies and unhealthy bodies. And I don't necessarily know that that association has any true linking besides fat phobia. My DoorDash would tell you otherwise. Like, yeah. There's a thing called set points. There's a ton of research on it that your body likes to be at specific weights. Yep. It likes to be in a specific way. Mm -hmm. So if you are fighting yourself to lose weight by not eating over exercising and you are damn near killing yourself to be at a specific weight, your body's unhappy. It's important to no note that a choice can be harder for people to make due to conditions in their life, yes. mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's still a choice. I could say that I had food addiction. I looked to food when I was stressed and this and that and this, and so it's harder for me to choose it than for someone who has like the perfect lifestyle, who someone who has parents who are giving them this and that and this, but I definitely still acknowledge that it was my choice. At the end of the day, when I go there and I look and I say, mm, should I order a second hamburger? I'm the one choosing whether or not I order that second hamburger. I'm the one making that choice. Not to blow, not to blow all of my critical thinking load at the start of the episode. But he did touch on something that I do want to talk about, um, and that would be the mental health side. So I, we talked about the economic side. We talked a bit about the societal view side. But there is a mental health side to food, okay? That does exist. 
Um, I can say that as somebody who has suffered with his mental health in the past, I have turned to food for the comfort that it brings. Okay. Uh, there ain't nothing like a good mac and cheese, bro. It's going to lift my spirits. Now, I do think this can be unhe an unhealthy way of coping with, with stress. Um, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and claim that they're, that it's not, that being, that um, at all overweight is built the same. Because I don't think that that's necessarily true. Um, I don't think it's necessarily true to say that like all all overweightness is the same, okay? So one of the things that I do do uh, want to touch about because I think it's very important is that if you are using food as a way to cope with um, depression, anxiety, stress, all of these things, if, if food is your out for that, I don't think that that's inherently negative, but I would suggest seeking a nutritionist, seeking um, therapy, seeking somebody to talk to because it can be a coping mechanism, right? It's not a bad, I can describe it in this way. It's not bad to collect items as a hobby. You might like to collect comic books. That's a good outlet. That might help with your stress and anxiety. Having a hobby like collecting can help with that things. But like when you start to become a hoarder, then we want to look at how your mental health and how these things are affecting your daily life. So I'll, I'll leave it at, at that for that. Uh, I'm not going to watch their ad about better help um, because I've heard for I'm not going to watch their ad about better help. Or... Right. I would rather be skinny than fat. Can the agreeers please step forward? I would probably step forward. Let me, let me, I would, I would probably step forward. Uh, it's not that I dislike my body, but there are times where I'm like, shit, if I was skinny, I wouldn't have to worry about, uh, you know, whether I can fit on a roller coaster or something like that. Uh, but like, maybe not even skinny. Skinny's not even the word. I'd rather be just like, I'd rather just lose a couple pounds, which I could if I felt like it, but I don't feel like it. So maybe I wouldn't rather. I think there's a lot of different struggles when it comes to being a bit bigger. And I have a sister that is very, like she's 400 pounds and she struggles a lot. She has lymphedema and the, to shower is really, really hard. So I do think for like an overall happy life and like zero struggle, I think I'd rather be skinny. I think that it is common in society to want to be skinny. I think the average person typically wants to be skinny. I'm actually surprised that I didn't see more people come forward on Bro, that Bro, how much you want to bet she watches pearly things? How much you want to bet? She just seems like the average just pearly things watcher. People treat you better. Um, it is what is considered the standard of beauty. Your life expectancy. Uh, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't say that. I, I'm going to I'm gonna push back on this standard of beauty thing. I'm going to push back on it. As someone who's been raised black my whole life, skinny ain't what we go for. <laughs> Listen, I think the standard of beauty has actually shifted to slim thick. I actually think slim thick is the beauty standard right now. Because I'm sorry. Don't nobody want... I don't want to be with a, with a stick... When I go back and watch early seasons of, like, um, America's Next Top Model, I'm like, I don't find... I don't want... I don't find none of y'all. Oh, no, no. It don't do nothing for me. But Slim Thick! Tendency is longer. You tend to be healthier. I'm also really tall. I'm six foot six. So I kind of wish I uh, could just pick a single struggle because uh, finding the clothes and things like that when you're bigger both ways can make it really hard. So if I was... Fuck, finding clothes is fucking challenging, bro. I'm six. I'm not six six, but I'm six foot tall. And finding big and tall clothes that feel good, that look good, and that like don't do the thing where it sits all in your rolls and shit like that, and you gotta do the cert pull. Yeah, that shit is hard. I'm skinnier, at least that's one less thing I have to worry about. But also, I've got uh, two kids and a wife, and I'm taking care of them. And as you pointed out, I definitely think that I'm at less health risks if I'm a skinnier person, if I'm a healthier person in that capacity. And I would much rather be that so that I could be around for my kids longer. Can the disagreeers please step forward? I 
I'm speaking as someone who actually was a former smaller person, mm -hmm. and I had the most body insecurities when I was small. I was constantly living in fear of gaining weight and having people tell me, oh, don't, don't gain weight, don't do this, make sure that your weight is the same. And once I finally gained weight, I realized that, worst off, life wasn't over. I didn't feel any need to not engage in life the previous way that I had, and the attention that I got was different, but even as a smaller person, you get negative attention. And rather than trying to control my body to avoid that negative attention, I would prefer to address the situation as a society, make it more accessible mm. for everybody to where we aren't feeling like I have to be a certain way that's normal in order to be treated like a human being and respected. If I could counter, because I was a bit bigger when I was younger, and that's when I was the most insecure. I would look in the mirror. I did have family members that were skinny, but then I had a family member that was much bigger. And just the way that I perceived myself, I hated it, and I even became anorexic to like not be big. I don't think skinny always equates to being healthy. Exactly. Get, yeah, there we go. Let's go, Parker. Six five. Okay. Forty pounds last time I checked, and I'm severely underweight. And I, I know about this on a day-to-day -day basis. That being said, I don't know where I'd want to lean at a appropriate weight level. But I think it's important to understand for some skinny people, it's we're not living a great life by any means. And sometimes I feel like this man gets kind of it. Lost in translation when they see someone who's really skinny. I, I guess yeah. it depends on what you mean when you think of the term skinny. Are you thinking of just like an average weight person, or are you thinking of but how you are now? I'm the average weight for like women in America. Yeah, like, so like, like, if point. we're talking about average. an average, mm. like I'm gonna be the closest. Mm. If your biggest priority is to be at a smaller body, you need to reassess your priorities. Yeah. Bro, she's so fine, bro. What the fuck? Not focus on health. Yeah. In the immediate tie between skinniness and health, like you emphasized, there is such a gap between, one, the research, because the research has a huge fat phobic bias mm -hmm. in it, and there has been research that shows that they aren't, even especially during, let's say, COVID, COVID and the correlation between obesity. They rushed through those studies so fast because in society's mind, oh, of course a fat person is going to equal someone who's going to get sick faster, is going to get sick easier. It was an easy jump. Mm -hmm. So they didn't yeah, do all one the, of the things they were supposed to do. One of the things I wish they pushed back on on this girl about the one with the beanie, I wish they had pushed pushed on why she felt bad when she was over, when she was quote unquote overweight, right? And I think the reason is going to be because of the societal expectations that are very much set on women more than they are set on men. Not going to say they're not set on men. I'm a glowing example of how 90% of my comment section is, oh, why should we listen to a man that's fat? Why should we listen to fat people? Blah, 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 blah. But, uh, but obviously there is more of that pressure as a woman, especially a young woman. That pressure set on high school age girls, middle school age girls is so, I, I can't even imagine it. Now, now, like I said, growing up, I, I was ridiculed for my weight throughout like all of school. Um, uh, but I, I can't imagine how that affects, um, young girls, um, specifically. And I wonder, had she had a better support system, would she feel this way? And, and, and an even better question is how do we create a support system like that? You know what I mean? I've never met a person, not one. I've never met one human being. Now they might exist, but I've never met one person. Um, specifically one woman who who had a healthy relationship with their body in high school and and middle school if they were not just inherently thin if they didn't just inherit and even then I don't know that I've met someone with a healthy relationship with their body I think puberty has a lot to do with that and that that you know you're never going to you're never gonna have that but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how we set that support system up for young people so that way they don't have the same um, – what, what's the word I wanted? Insecurities uh, as we did. I don't know how that – I don't know how we do that.
do. They didn't check their bias. So they didn't by check. saying the study is biased, you're saying that the study didn't account for the variable that obesity may also take a factor into. It's just that there's so many variables in humanity that these pharmaceutical companies could only account for so many during their trials. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're biased. However, if you want to talk about bias in studies, actually recently we've been doing the opposite. So for instance, a lot of our studies have been based on BMI. Mm -hmm. And so we've been showing that, oh, fat people aren't necessarily extremely unhealthy if we look at people with a certain BMI. However, bodybuilders also have a really high BMI, yeah. and so they really? get counted into that category. And so it wasn't until very recently that they equated for right that, that mistake, and it shows, oh my goodness, being fat is actually extremely unhealthy, um, like way, no. way more unhealthy. Than you, 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 you kind of understood what was being said there. Now, in the research that I've done, BMI, just the way it was created, is is inherently uh, kind of messed up. So there, um, yeah, so BMI, I, I, BMI is just, ever realized you False can't gauge health to begin by with. Yeah. looking at That's somebody really yeah like none of my health issues all of them precipitated my weight gain but mm -hmm. i always get assumed oh don't you want to be skinny so that you don't have a cane anymore and you don't feel the way you feel and it's like no because i have lupus and i'm always yeah. going to feel like this it's gonna happen <laughs> like i have crps it's, it's going to yeah. deteriorate it's going to continue america has an obesity problem Would I step forward on this question? Probably. I think... I think it's hard to not step forward for this question, right? So, so obviously... Um, obviously, there is the fat phobia act, um, side of things, right? And I would be remiss to to be biased in this and not say there isn't also a problem with obesity now i won't go as far as to what some of these people will do and be like oh well you're glorifying obesity because i don't think that's what's happening i think that there is an issue with um proper health right and not the health that these people think which is oh calories in calories out that's not proper health i think the issue comes from health I think, like I said, it comes from um, food insecurity and poverty. I think it also comes from uh, relationship with food. I'm interested to see what they say, but I do think there is a there are problems relating to obesity that are plaguing America. Now, do I think if we could, if everybody that could be skinny could be skinny, should they be skinny? Probably not, but um, I do think there are issues with obesity and there is a prob obesity problem. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. You look at the weight of the average American, you see how obesity has affected not just children. I mean, the fact that we have more younger and younger people who are looking heavier and heavier and you, you see that like, you know, the, the way that weight affects us as a society and you compare that to how we were in the past. Now, not, not that we should always, you know, we shouldn't compare ourselves to the era of the Great Depression when people just couldn't find food, of course, but yeah. People are heavier now in an unhealthy way, and people have are eating unhealthy. They have, are eating it through unhealthy access to food. They're eating diets high in seed oils. They're eating high in corn syrup. They're, they're doing all this kind of stuff that's not good for them. That, that we is didn't true. Used to do. That is true. And it's bad. It's not a good thing. It's an epidemic. It but is be, it the person's it fault, or like is that. it a fault with our system to be set up to run this way? Is the question. There's so much access to just anything yeah. like it's so crazy these days and you know I'm so surprised that we're actually supporting a lot of this mm -hmm. you know and there's always people like you know like it's fine that we have like three McDonald's like on the same street <laughs> and it's just like we don't think that this is 
adding to the problem. What I think is really sad about that is so many people in America just see the profit in it. I don't want to say I know that these people know the problem, but it's like, how can you not see the problem? They have to see it and just not care. They have to just be like, well, we're gaining profit. Do you see how much this McDonald's is making? Capitalism! There's another one across the street. Like that's Capitalism! Just like <laughs> how it is. The co corporations, it's the yeah. medical industry. Mm -hmm. Having a fat country makes us money. It doesn't help that our cities aren't walkable either. No. Yeah. America no. is a country of non walkable <laughs> that cities. Was... Let's go, walkable cities! Let's go, walkable cities, bro! That yeah. is why I. I wavered a little bit because <laughs> I think we have a problem with how to treat obesity. Mm -hmm. I think we have a problem with how to make it so that it is not an epidemic. But this is a systemic thing, yeah. that we are in a society and in an environment that breeds this, yeah. and we are doing it to ourselves, we are doing it to our children, and our corporations and our industries are doing it to us, and they aren't having to take responsibility And for they're it. encouraging it with media. So and the mukbangs, yeah. I was literally gonna bring that up. Oh my God, here she goes. Like all those She's gonna, no, this is gonna be the Lizzo friends. moment, isn't it? Not only the well. mukbangs, but also like, Lizzo. Why are fat phobes so butthurt about Lizzo, bro? Why are you so butthurt about Lizzo? Is, is the Lizzo in the room with you right now? Show me on the doll where Lizzo hurt you specifically. Oh, and other big like media. Lizzo, I'm sorry. There's, there's, a very, there's a difference. There's a very difference between the people who are telling people go out and get fat versus a I Lizzo who's so saying fat. accept me yeah. the way I am. She's not just saying accept me the way I am. She's dressing extremely scantily clad and then saying and? if you don't think that it's normal for a morbidly obese person to be wearing a G-string in the middle of public, then you're the problem. I'm and sorry, trying to when has Lizzo worn a G-string in the middle of public? None of y'all gonna question her on that? I'd have been like, when's she done that? When has she done that? Also, again, why, it, so G-strings are for skinny people now? It's bad if fat person wear G-string? That's my problem. Is, is you're not actually interested in the solution of this. You're not actually interested in how we can, how we can again, give kids a better relationship with food, how we can help with food insecurities, how we can help with, like my man said, walkable cities. You're only interested in shaming fat people for being shame, for being fat. That's all you care about. It's just fat people, fat. I don't want to see fat. You should feel bad. Normalize society to this obese culture which is extremely unhealthy and what is an obese culture a culture yeah. which like normalizes like I'm obese obesity. and I haven't even heard that did you hear that whoa please somebody I'm not I'm gonna play press play someone catch her on that circular answer she said we have we're normalizing an obese culture and then when she said what is an obese culture she said well normalizing obesity so are you normalizing an obese culture or is it obese? Oh, the circular answer, baby girl. Well, obesity is already normal, so it's. Yeah. Well, I don't think it should be normalized, and it has, and it wasn't normal. But just a what's couple the decades difference ago. between a obese? Yes, because okay, we can go even further back, where obesity was actually a sign of wealth. Like it's always been normal. Fat people have always been normal. Like oh my god, I hate this woman. Person, myself, walking around in a g-string or a bathing suit, as I do almost every day and Based. a skinny person. Like, is it okay that the skinny person is doing that? I don't think so, but that's, I don't think <laughs> that's yeah. for all the reasons. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. I, I get the whole thing public thing. Which is to say that when Lizzo does it is the same as a Victoria's Secret angel. Why it's just not the it, same. You know? Yeah, what's the difference? It, what do you mean? Are you telling what's me they look, you're telling me it doesn't? I'm not saying they look the same. Well, but I mean, Lizzo she is, like, they have got her cornered. She does not know what to say. Her whole worldview came crashing down because that's the thing. She's claiming that there's something not right. So she's making a moral judgment claim that it's morally wrong that fat people wear scantily clad clothes in public. They're saying, is it okay for skinny people to do it? And she's saying yes. So now they're pushing her. Why is it okay for skinny people and not fat people? And she has no response. She has no answer for that. 
Safety implication. Yeah. So if yeah. I walk down the street, I'm a runway model. I'm a print and runway model. I have walked down a runway in a thong. So me doing that is shameful, but a skinny model is like okay. A I didn't. Model. I don't know if I use the phrase shameful. Problematic. But I don't think mm -hmm. that we as a society should be modeling obesity. So but I'm not modeling obesity, I'm modeling the lingerie that obese people need to be able to have availability to buy. Yeah. So, they can, so they've always had the ability no, to buy we have not. lingerie. We would have told no, her no, single no, underwear is like almost 20. They are destroying. She is waffling more than an Eggo commercial. They are just nom, nom, nom. Pun not intended, but they are eating right now. $20 yeah. and you go to like any other Walmart, any Target and like all these underwears aren't special for like five to like $20 and stuff. Well, it and does take like, more fabric to make it. It does take more fabric they to make use it. That but it. It does not take that much more fabric. Please stop with this. It does not take $7 worth of more fabric. That is a lie. <laughs> But excuse, but that would make yards of fabric yeah. for gowns. You, like, is a small is, a different price than an extra large or a it, large? It is. And, and yeah, we're I, willing... For 3XL shirts, I got to pay more money. I think people view models and Instagram people and all of us who are plus size and proud as we're pushing this obese lifestyle. Yes. No, <laughs> I'm pushing the fact that this is what I live in. This is my yeah. life. And I need other people who feel this way to say, hey, I want to be able to wear clothes that look cute too. Oh, I forgot there was, I forgot somebody disagreed. There's a problem with obesity in America, but I think it's a first world country problem because mm -hmm. it's spread across the globe. And also I don't see it as a problem. I do feel like health wise people should try to be healthier, but there's no perfect body. There's no perfect person. There's no perfect size. And there's people who are underweight. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of them. And then there's a lot of people who are overweight. So I, I really don't see it as like a problem. Okay. But just to touch on what you were saying, because I am in the fashion industry. I wanted to become a fashion designer. My dad was one. And they buy 10 rolls of fabric for one price. So it really doesn't cost that much to make underwear sure but don't you also have to worry about distribution i mean if, if the average person is let's say in, in between small medium large and you're sending clothes out for those you know you could send out ten thousand of this ten thousand of that ten thousand of that you can't always send out ten thousand three xls because you're not going to have that many people fitting in the three xl no because there's somebody who works in marketing and they research that that um area mm -hmm. There's a census, okay. so we have a database of what type of people are there. Now, we don't know who's going Hitting. in there, but we know the type Hitting. of people that live in that area and the type Hitting. of people that come and visit the area. So God, that damn. person is doing their job accordingly, and usually large sizes are sold out. Okay, so... so yes, they fucking are. Bro, I, have, I shop at one store. I shop at one store, okay? Do you know I would love to go into a Kohl's or to go into a Target or to go into a, a, a Banana Republic and just like, oh, I can just buy a shirt here. No, I shop at Burlington Co. Factory because it's the only place with cheap large sizes. It's it. Or I shop on Amazon. And I'd rather not shop on Amazon for clothes, but here we are. We've, cre we've commodified and it's only because they know that big people have to pay a higher price. That's it. It's only because they know that they have to. It has nothing to do with it costing more to make a shirt that's a 3X to a 4X. That's not a lot more fabric, guys. They're lying to you. Somebody brought up the food desert earlier. I can't even. Who, who, who? You didn't show us that Jubilee. I would have loved to see the person who brought up food deserts. Oh, you cut so much. Think of an area that would have a so-called food desert. Sorry, can someone explain, like maybe just for my ignorance, I'm like guessing food a food desert. desert is just, there's so, no food anywhere? No, right. it's healthy options for food. Yes. So you can go yes. into certain low income Fuck areas yes. and you'll see a Starbucks, a yes. McDonald's, a yes. Chick-fil-A. Yes! There's no Trader Joe's. Yup. Food desert, actually properly, there isn't any, mm. like for a long period of driving, 
there's exists. one gas station and a liquor store. Then you have to drive two more miles to hit the next grocery store. But with <laughs> the food desert, it's not just that there can be a grocery store there, but if I'm making minimum wage, I'm not gonna spend all of my money on what is gonna last me two meals versus what's gonna last me an entire week. Yes. Or if I'm if, on EBT yeah. and I have specific things that I have to choose to buy versus what I- Wow, usually Jubilee does really bad. Uh, not really bad, let me rephrase that. Usually when I watch these episodes, the right-leaning side or the, the, the wrong side, as I like to call it, is very vocal and the left side very often does not have the information that they need to, that they did not come equipped, not all the time, tons of people in Jubilee that do, but almost every person on this episode has knowledge that is killing it right now. But just, oh, Jubilee, this is how you do an episode, baby. I can't buy. Yeah. I'm born and raised in Colorado. In the outskirts, there's so many small towns that you don't even know that they're there. You, most of them you won't see on a map, but if you're from there, then you'll know, and they all have to drive a decent amount to be able to go to an actual grocery store. But how often are you going grocery shopping? Maybe like once every two weeks it would be typically I mean, I think normal. It so you have to do a drive My once every go once a week. So you're making a drive once a week, once every two weeks. I mean, not a lot of people have drive access to the Yeah, like time. what if I, mean, I don't have a car? I was like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't even And drive. if you don't have, usually these food deserts also have very poor public transportation options. Yeah. Yeah. So like you are left with people who are stranded. Yeah, but then what are they eating at all? Yeah, unhealthy I mean, crap. Like, no, but how what, are they surviving at all? The drive through, they don't got a car to go. Yeah, the <laughs> exactly. They? they usually, what I see when I go to those rural towns and those rural places is they have chickens mm -hmm. and they have animals. Right. And Farming. guess what? That's you can get some healthy, healthy. food out of that. That's that like you know healthy. having eggs and protein and things like that. I think I would be healthier if I lived rurally. In fact, my wife I, and I are trying to leave the state so we're not near all the Uber Eats and all the. I grew, yeah. up, in a, I grew up in a town of 500. The obesity problem there was not as significant. Yeah, one of the, I, I, it, so food deserts affect inner cities a lot. And I wish they would touch on this, how much food deserts affect inner cities. Because it's so much easier for me to walk around the block to the corner store and have them make me a chopped cheese than it is for me to go to Trader Joe's, buy groceries and walk up a five floor walk up with six bags full of groceries in my hand. It's easier for you to order out than it is, I wish they would touch on this, but. As say in LA, LA. Mm -hmm. and we talk about like food deserts and stuff, the nearest Walmart where I grew up was 45 minutes in any direction. The nearest McDonald's was nowhere near to be seen for a long time. So when I hear- You're really these, focused like, on the I, fast food part. You, you, there could be some evidence there as like the obesity problem is very low lift. Were there grocery stores in your small town? Yes. Exactly. Like, like I'm, I, I'm like kind of baffled by the. Fact that <laughs> Thank you. Maybe, yeah, maybe I just too. need to go out there and like experience the food desert. Put me on, Jubilee. Put me on. I can explain this. But like, there was grocery stores where I grew up. Just because we lived in the middle of nowhere it doesn't mean we didn't have access to food. And actually, and I have to agree, we did have access to healthy food. Mm -hmm. Very healthy food all the time. I, I, I don't think this is. A, big of an issue in my personal opinion. Fat shaming is worse than skinny shaming. Oh, I fuck with her, bro. So I do agree that fat shaming is worse than skinny shaming. Just overall, entirely, the way that people like comment on people's weight mm -hmm. Compared to somebody skinny, they usually don't comment on somebody skinny. Yeah. They don't think there's something wrong with them. They don't, like, they'll maybe say, like, oh, you're very thin. Actually, I want to stick on the food desert thing for another minute. I'm thinking of my hometown right now. I'm thinking of my hometown. My hometown, not a big population. Let me see how many, how many people are populated. I'm sorry, I'm stuck on the food desert thing. How many people are... I had a hometown of about 6,000 people, Okay. From Front Street, which is the, the first street in town, up to, I want to say 8th or 9th or 10th, a ways away. There's no grocery store. There are gas stations. There's no grocery store. So you, if, if you live in the lower income part of town, which is, which is in that area, you need to own a car to get to the grocery store. store. Or, or... You have to take a taxi or the bus, which is not reliable in my hometown. 
So, so no, I'm, I'm on, I'm, and that's not to say there are McDonald's or anything, but it's to say that there are corner stores and gas stations and things like that down there that you go to. And that does not have a produce section. You're not getting produce from there. I'm, I'm sorry. Fuck, fuck. And um, do you want to eat a cheeseburger? Mm -hmm. But that's not as bad as telling somebody you eat 10. Stop. Yeah. And you don't even know that they're eating 10. Yeah. Fat shaming is a systemic problem. You're Agreed. not going to not get a job because you're too skinny. Skinny bodies are praised in our society, whereas fat bodies, like, I don't get it as often as other people, but I get a lot of comments on my Instagram that are saying, like, you're really beautiful, yeah, but you would look a lot better if you lost 50, 60 pounds. I'll be right back. I forgot something. Oh, my God. Oh my god, bro. Speaking of speaking <laughs> Speaking of fat, I forgot K Space ordered me Sonic and it has been sitting outside for almost 30 minutes. <laughs> that ice cream is soupy. I put it in the freezer to refreeze. I just totally forgot. I totally forgot about it. Totally just blanked blanked on it <laughs> it's in the freezer i'm gonna eat it i just wanted to get cold again let's get back to the episode something that i always get a lot of comments on is my masculinity as a man mm. because of how skinny i am it's always something that i've always kind of dealt with my favorite comment is always i look like a uh, sickly ill victorian child mm. and that's horrible sorry, sorry. I don't mean to laugh at no that. no no <laughs> i don't it doesn't bother me as much but th this idea that skinny people can't also feel get get these kind of comments are just kind of mind blowing. That doesn't mean that they're, you know, that one side is getting it worse than the other. I think that there are both sides getting piled on just at different. Vehicles. I think I think the woman before him was right. It's a systemic issue though when it comes to when it comes to fat phobia. It's not a systemic issue when it comes to skinny phobia. It's just not. Sorry. Varying degrees. I think we're conflating two things as well. So there's a difference between fat shaming and fat discrimination. Mm -hmm. Fat shaming is an aspect of fat discrimination, mm -hmm. but some of the things you were touching on are specifically societal and systemic fat discrimination that mm -hmm. goes into our medical system, it goes into employment, it goes yeah. into all of our civil rights. As fat people, that skinny people don't necessarily have that same issue. And I come from cultures where they straight out called out skinny people. Oh, you look like bones, oh flaca, all like all of <laughs> that so I watched my cousins go through it I went through it when I would get too skinny as people we are just too scrutinized when it comes to our bodies we don't let people live but I think that's a good point you said you were called skin and bones when you got not too I, my cousin what a, you're sorry no whatever but your cousin so people using shame as a motivator to get your cousin to not be too skinny shame as a motivator is a powerful tool so the reason I sit over there is fat shaming worse than skinny shaming well, you could argue that shaming somebody in order to motivate them towards a healthy lifestyle is actually a good thing. Now, I have a lot of empathy because hearing your story about how you've been struggling with this since you were a child. Since I was like a newborn baby. Bro, like what is she saying? Just, everything's just been on that end where I've never known anything about being skinny or being fit or being athletic. I've never known anything about that. Probably your situation, I don't think shame necessarily would motivate you, but for somebody <laughs> where it is a option, so for instance, if you watch TLC, you watch My 600 okay. Pound Life, uh, uh, Thousand Pound <laughs> Sisters, Family by the Ton, 
All of them can do it. All of them have had this systemic issue That's of the thing, though. I have watched those like as a younger person, and it would make me feel disgusted with me when I was a kid, so it would make me worse, and it made my mental health worse, because then I'm like, is that how like everybody automatically views me as just like somebody who's oversized and could possibly never even attain it because it's so just common. I don't think we Jesse post if you made a tentative logo post it in a post it in my discord post it in a the fan art section of discard let me see it. We should shame anyone to do anything. No. I think mm -hmm. everyone deserves to like themselves enough to like enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And if you do that as a fat person, okay, if you do it as a skinny person, also chill, it's not my business. Sh but shame I is a broad category. I do think shame works in some cases. I think that there has been good fat shaming towards me and bad fat shaming. Bad fat shaming is just, you know, somebody just saying, you're fat, things like that. That doesn't really work. But what does work is somebody looking at me and saying, don't you want to be around for your kids? And that worked. I don't think that that's shaming, yeah, like, Do you consider that shaming? I do. I think that's shaming. I think they were I... telling me, like, you should lose weight to be around for your children. Mm -hmm. I think How's that shaming? shaming? Like, like a, an attempt to like try and say guy. something bad about like me. Like they're personalizing like, to it towards you and towards your kids. Like, sure. Of course, yeah. It's yeah, but I think, and yeah. I think that worked. I think that worked. That really encouraged me to go, go to the gym and start trying to lose weight. But that's you, though. Like, sure. I think, I think you have to be specific towards I think, the person. I think that's one thing is it, it depends on the person. Sure. And sure. If, if someone wants to shame me and like, you know, it depends on the person. I've been shamed a couple of times and it's kicked me in the gear to try to gain weight. But... Uh, it's still really hard sure. and it's you know it depends on who you are I think when you were making a comment about people questioning your masculinity I get the question of actually looking like a woman all the time and it's always in play I always get compared to like male characters especially when I don't wear makeup and that's because I don't have boobs and I can't help that but it's definitely really really hard to like have people tell you constantly like here's the standard of how a woman should look and you don't look like yeah. that without even saying it they don't say it they're categorizing me they're making fun of me saying that I look like this one soccer player or something and you know I think it's funny but also shame can also be hard because I, yeah. I can see what you mean sometimes it can really motivate you when it's out of love yes. but when it's out <laughs> of pain difference. and when it's out of like not knowing someone and know, just I don't know that you can shame out of love that just doesn't sound like what shame would be maybe it's just me it doesn't sound like shame. Then, yeah the people who said that to me about my kids were not yeah, just some random guy online. It was right. people who were close to me and I knew cared about me who mm -hmm. I had a conversation with. So I do think it, it matters who says it, but I still would consider it to an extent shaming. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm okay with that. I think there is good shame. I think, that's a, I think sometimes it helps motivate people in the right way. The body positivity movement promotes childhood obesity. Diet culture has positive effects. I can't name one. I, I guess for me, diet culture is an important thing to have for people in the world. What I've realized after we're about to finish this up is there wasn't a lot of talk on skinny culture or like skinny people as a whole. Maybe that's because of how the prompt is. But I think it's important if we're going to give positivity to kids who are obese, I think it's important to give them the options to, you know, say if they want to lose weight, they can. I, I don't see a problem with that in, in any real sense. I think that diet culture is a reason that a lot of people struggle with weight problems yeah. in the first place. I have even struggled with my own weight issues in the past, and uh, I was like struggling kind of with depriving myself too much because I had a trainer. Um, and then I started binge eating. And as soon as I had like a mental break where I was like physically in incapable of stopping myself from putting food in my mouth, I immediately went to see a doctor. And that doctor told me to read a book called Intuitive Eating. And it wildly changed my life. And it was about okay. getting past diet culture and how about how so many people ruin their lives with diet culture. And you see it with like, the somebody talked about eating grapes and lettuce, yeah. and it's <laughs> grapes and lettuce, and it's just like, it's, it's this extreme, and so you go from one extreme and then you break, and then you go to the other extreme, and so like, I was Can you pick extreme. a lane? Mm -hmm. I broke, went to, so that's why I'm anti-diet culture. Yeah, I, okay. I tried I mean, good for a while. 
Um, and, and that's the thing about what I realized is like that fat, that fad diet kind of stuff. And yeah, did I lose weight? I absolutely lost weight, sure. Uh, I didn't keep it off, and the reason I didn't keep it off is because um, diet culture is about turning the word diet from uh, your your overall eating into um, an activity that takes place over a period of time. Uh, a diet is, should not be something you do from January until May of next year. Mm -hmm. Diet is what you continually eat, is what you continually put into yourself. Yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, he's so right about that. My issue with diet culture is this idea of like. Oh, I've got this perfect solution for you, man. There's you a reason why. This, do you ever this, think this, about? Do you ever think about how the word diet just means your, your what you eat, right? But we have this idea that going on a diet means you're specifically eating less. Is typically what people think when they hear like going on a diet. But the word diet just means the sum of all food consumed by a person. It's just the mass amount of like the sum of what you eat. So yeah, I, I, he's, he's real for this. This and that, and it's like, no. Like, the, the reality is, is like, yeah, there are good, correct, and objective ways, I think, for a lot of people to eat. And yes, everybody has to have some variations here and there. There's no one bag fix all, and diet culture is so much about trying to say like, all you gotta do is just eat cheese puffs every day for the rest of your life. And, <laughs> and it's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just, I, that's why I think diet culture doesn't help. You know, you're always gonna get those people who have the perfect answer, they have the perfect solution to either lose weight or diet isn't just losing weight, it's also gaining weight, mm, yeah. you know? And I think a lot of people, maybe it's just for me, but when I diet, it's actually uh, not the opposite of fasting. I'm trying to eat more, I'm trying to gain more. Yeah. And I think people forget that when it comes to diet. When people instantly hear the word diet, they think losing weight. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that should always be the case. I've been on a lot of diets. I've been on diets for myself. I've been on, put on diets and I've been put on diets by my coaches. Mm. So when I was young, I felt like it was more so like fasting, 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 not eating, but working out. And maybe hopefully eating once you get home as a reward. And then when it became like, oh, like you're, you're a good person in the team to like be the big person, be the defender, be buff. So it was like, now we have to gain all this weight and we have to pound you out. So it was like, I had to eat like five meals in a day. And I was, I felt so gross because I was just like, I've never had to like pull out like a, a bar or something and like eat it during class and be like, I have to eat this because it's part of my diet. When we talk about diet culture, we're talking about not your diet as a whole. It's usually a fad diet is what we're talking about when we're talking about diet culture. And for me personally, I know that I've seen a lot of, especially women in my life, going on fad diets that are just not sustainable. And that's kind of the purpose of diet culture is that it's not a sustainable thing. But we're all talking about like mainstream, like keto, mm -hmm. like gluten free. And I, I think it's everyone's just polarized on these certain mm -hmm. ones that I believe that you should eat gluten. I think yeah. if you take it out of your diet, you're actually going to get sick. Unless you're, you um, are. Unless, unless uh, celiacs, celiacs, <laughs> yeah. celiacs, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. It goes back to like what she said, yeah. which is, you know, intuitive awesome. eating. So what is the positive you think you've seen? for people from diet culture, which I think, and I guess what do you consider diet culture? I guess like diet culture to me is the resources you need to get to where you wanna be in your life in your body. That's how I've always viewed diet By culture. By dieting, do you mean like journaling what you're eating? Yeah, if you wanna journal, if you want to, you know, talk to a therapist, if you wanna work out, if you wanna see a doctor, if you wanna go on meds, like, Everyone's but always it's not being super, like when you diet, you're not being like, I'm completely cutting out carbs or I'm completely doing this, I'm right? You're, you're, water only or are you, so you're like watching your behaviors. macros and your micros and you're calculating Like, that I guess and you're if, if you're asking if I know how many calories I have to eat, yeah, like I have to eat like 4,000 a day. When yeah. most people talk about diet culture, they've done they some sort of, of extremely restrictive thing. Mm -hmm. And when you do something really restrictive, it changes your brain chemistry and the way so that you think about food. And it makes you obsessive over food. Mm -hmm. And then, but it sounds like the way that you're doing it is extremely healthy because you're not depriving your body of something. But isn't that just goes back to like, you guys are talking about the extremes of diet culture? Diet culture is one thing and then a healthy lifestyle having a and healthy diet type thing different. are two different things. Okay. I personally don't think of living a healthy lifestyle as a diet. You've been in like a model spheres. Do you, do you see mm -hmm. diet culture and how has it impacted space? There was a point in my life like 
when I was a junior in high school where the person that I was with at the time, he's like six foot six and super tall. And <laughs> so, you know, the mom was like, hey, like my son is gonna go audition to this big agency, which is still big to this day. And, you know, you should come. So I went and um, I weighed 115 pounds and I was a D cup and they said that I weighed too much. And so seeing that really struck me in the beginning with the negative part of dieting and just kind of went into the spiral of like, okay, well, if I'm too big, then what, what are people doing to not be this size? Like how, mm -hmm. how can I make it to, be, to do what I wanna do if this is my limitation to it? It took years later to realize like, shit, I was really disciplining myself for no apparent reason except for this underlying, underlying feeling from years ago that I could never get rid of. When you're talking about like discipline, I think it can be really positive with dieting and like in taking your calories, but for me personally, and I'm a very specific case, seeing those numbers and knowing that I couldn't achieve it because I didn't have the appetite was also just so saddening to me because reading the bare minimum of what a woman needs five foot five at my age, I was like, that's not that much. And I still couldn't eat it at the time. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? There's different ways to motivate people. And one of them is out of pain and anger. And I feel like a lot of the diet culture, whether it's for positive or negative, is just trying to gear into that. that. And you know, I, I just am more about being healthy. I, I hear diet and I think of something that's positive. Mm. And it's been positive to me and you know it's something i'm always trying to achieve i guess like if we were to redo this the same exact question i may hesitate and not walk across the line uh i, I guess i'll never know but hearing these perspectives were really good because i probably didn't know as much about that i like experience. that you learn and i want to thank all of you for sharing your opinions <laughs> yeah. with us and for challenging us and i i really want to thank you i thank you for the back and forth I, yeah. it's something that i came here mm -hmm. for and i wanted to talk to somebody who thinks differently and i've learned some things so i appreciate that for all of you all right yeah. guys that was another jubilee episode in the book uh, that'll have to go on YouTube, uh, tomorrow probably, or the next day.